hello, hello. I've arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, person who actually streams video games. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. Yes, hello, Lightning Spirit. Good to see you again. Yes, it has been a while. Yes, it has been a while for the both of us. But yeah, so. Probably a lot that could be said about my lack of consistently re recently, but I'm not going to go into it too much, because I don't like to think about it that much, to be honest. Yes, so instead, we will talk a little bit about the plans. So yes, tonight we will be playing Ark Knights. Yes. And... Yeah, I'm hoping to make that a regular occurrence once again. Yes. For the time being, I can't ne necessarily make any guarantees. I feel like a lot of this is ground that I've tread before, but we're going to tread it again. <laughs> Just to be clear. It's not as though it wasn't something that I intended to be true every time I said it previously, but this time I feel more confident in my ability to follow through. Yes. So, going forward, I aim to get back up to at least one stream per week. Yeah, most likely going forward, that will be on Tuesday or Wednesday. Yes, the collab series with Sheppy Sheps should be returning due to some scheduling changes between the two of us. It will most likely be every other Friday is when that will happen. Um, I'm Fairly confident that there won't be one this Friday, but I believe we will be starting up again next Friday. But yes. So, I would like to do at least one stream a week in addition to that, ideally, but we will see. Yeah, like I said, Tuesday is the most likely day that you will see a stream from me. That is the day that I will sort of plan on, because it is generally the freest... Pardon. Yes, generally the freest day for me, as of right now. But yes, so... Maybe closer to 8, 7.30 perhaps, even if I'm especially early on those... Yes, on those aforementioned Tuesdays. But yes, and we'll be seeing more Arc Nights on those days as well. Yeah, with Sheppy Sheps, we should be finishing up Coffee Talk on our next collab. And then, ideally, we'll be moving on to our next game. Yes, we have already decided upon it. I don't know if Sheps has made any sort of announcements regarding it at this point. So I'm going to refrain from doing so at this, at this juncture. But yeah. So, anyway. It is kind of good to be back. It was... It's a bit of a... <laughs> I don't know, I get a little bit nervous whenever I've not streamed for a while. Yeah, I was sort of thinking, I was thinking about streaming yesterday, and I, I honestly couldn't bring myself to do it because I was so nervous. And I sort of thought to myself, man, I, I didn't used to be this nervous. I used to stream, you know, I used to stream instead of not streaming. But then I thought, no, I was, I was always nervous. <laughs> I was always nervous. I just, uh, in the time that I had spent not streaming, I had sort of, forgotten, forgotten that fact, and assumed that this was an unusual occurrence, but uh, thinking back on it, it was pretty normal. But yes, so, let's see, one thing that I want to do is, before we get started on the game, I want to do another Operator Spotlight. Yeah, this time we're going to be wrapping up what I had meant to talk about the at the end of last time. Yeah, the end of the last Operator Spotlight. And... Bu -bu -bu -bum. Hmm, it just occurs to me. Actually, no, this should be fine. I might need to do a little bit of shuffling when we get there, but the audio should be fine. Bu -bu -bu -bum. Yes, I'm not going to have everything quite, quite like I would like it, but oh well. Actually, no, I can, well, yeah, I can fix that real quick. Give me one second. All right, back again. So, yes. So, like I said, we're going to be continuing the Operator Spotlight. Well, I don't know. We'll be continuing the Operator Spotlight series. We're not going to be continuing necessarily on any thoughts that we started up last time, I don't think. But we will be continuing talking about what we were talking about. 
broadly speaking. We're going to be talking about the thing that I said I was going to be talking about. But yes. So, yeah, going forward, I aim to do one of these at the start of each Arc Knight stream. Yeah, rather than at the end. Not any particular reason for that, I just felt like it would be... I don't know, it just felt a little bit better for me. That way I can just, you know, have it be done and not have to worry about, you know, being pressed for time towards the end. But yes. So, I feel like there's more that I meant to say. More that I could say, perhaps, but I don't remember... I don't remember what I was going to say. So, oh, anyway. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, everything switched over. work. A little bit out of practice there. Yes, let me... and BGM. All right, so tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about Warfarin and Auk, first of all. We will be moving on in a little bit. But yes, Warfarin and Auk, like I said, but yes, these are two uh, operators who work in, I guess, I don't know, in some capacity in the medical team at Rhodes Island. Uh, of them, Warfarin is the one who is a medic, uh, both, I believe, you know, both in lore and in mechanics. Auk is, I want to say, a specialist, if I remember correctly. But yes. Yeah, the two are characters who are defined by being a bit, a bit strange. Yes, and that is something that is true in and out of gameplay. Yeah, what I wanted to focus on with these two, rather than any story significance that they might have, is I wanted to talk a little bit about their, their sort of, uh, their friendship, and a little bit about Warfarin specifically. But yes, so, bum, 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 bum. so yeah, so Auk, uh, is the son of a doctor, and his father uh, ended up getting wrapped up in some shady business and uh, dying, which is quite unfortunate. And for a number of reasons related to that and just sort of his own personal philosophy, yeah, Ock is notable for his distaste towards doctors, despite the fact that he's pretty skilled as one himself. But yes. Warfarin is basically the only doctor that he respects. Yes, he is, uh, he respects her unorthodox approach towards medicine. I will quote his, uh, profile here in saying, the reason that they get along is because of, because Warfarin's, quote, views towards medicine differ slightly from other medics, end quote, which resonates with Ock on the grounds that he is, also, a quote, a bit of a freak himself, end quote. This is a turn of phrase that I am exceptionally fond of, and I would like to use more often if at all possible. But yes, Warfarin, er, yes, Warfarin and Auk are both freaks, Auk being a bit of a freak himself. But yes, another thing that's fun about Warfarin, yes, is her pseudonym. But yes, she is a hematologist, so she studies blood. And in her profile, it mentions how she's published several authoritative medical books under the pseudonym Blood, which is a little bit on the nose, I feel like. But yes, and apparently the medical community, generally unaware of Warfarin, typically refers to this mysterious and legendary individual as Mr. Blood, which is funny because I would assume that you would refer to such a person as Dr. Blood, maybe? If they were publishing, you know, authoritative medical texts, but I don't know. I guess you probably need to be accredited before you get called a doctor one way or another, even if you are a legendarily skilled hematologist. But yes, anyway. It also goes on to state in her in her uh, profile that the reason that she chose blood as her alias is to hide the fact that she is a vampire, which is uh, also interesting. Taking blood as your name seems like a pretty bad way to disguise the fact that you're a vampire, even if you are studying blood. Warfarin and Ock are definitely characters we'll talk about more in the future, I think. Ock, 
probably more so than Warfarin, but Warfarin will, will get mentioned in reference to a lot of characters, I think. But yes. So. Anyway, I, I sort of observed to myself, thinking about this, that her referring to herself as blood when she published said text is because, uh, or is akin to if you had a marine biologist who went by the name Seal, and then you learn that they were, in fact, a shark. But yes. It is noted that Warfarin continues to use her pseudonym primarily because she thinks it's funny, so probably the irony is not lost on her. Anyway, so, these two freaks, <laughs> these two bits of freaks, eh, that's not, a, that's not a great way to phrase it. That's not as funny as, yeah, I don't know, I'll have to workshop it a little bit more if I want to throw that word out some more. But yes, now that these two freaks have been addressed, up up your thumb. Alright. My impromptu, impromptu adjustment has uh, failed me a little bit. Here we go. That should work. Yes, now that these two freaks have been addressed, is the pressure sensitivity not working? It is not. Alright. Maybe could have planned this a little bit better, but oh well. Oh dear. Oh dear. Alright. seems to be on, so I don't know why it's acting up quite so much. But we're not going to concern ourselves with it too much. It's only a very minor part of this anyhow. And I'm just... Alright. Well, maybe we'll just not use the touchscreen for the moment. Anyway, now that the freaks have been addressed, it's time to address the other character that I wanted to talk about right now. But yes. This is Frostleaf. Yeah, Frostleaf is a character that we're going to be adding to our squad a little bit. I'll talk a little bit about more that more once we get to her. But, uh, but yes, Frostleaf is a guard. She's a character that I'm quite fond of. Yeah. In part due to gameplay reasons, but mostly just because I, I just kind of like her character. Alright, everything's a little bit a little bit off right now. I guess that's what happens when you're out of practice. Anyway. So yes. So Frostleaf is a guard operator for Rhodes Island. She is a former mercenary and prior to that was a member of the Colombian Junior Army, which is to say she was a child soldier. But yes. She is notable for having experienced a considerable amount of combat at a rather young age, even by the standards of Arknights characters who tend to be rather young for the combat that they experience. Yes, it is in particular noted that that Frostleaf had begun to like begun training to wield her axe there before she had even learned to read. And granted, she didn't uh, she didn't learn to read for quite a while into her. And I don't. The ages of most Arknights characters are not specified. They are, some of them are estimated, some of them can be inferred to within a certain range, but I don't believe any character has a specific numerical age given at any point. But yeah, I think it's implied vaguely that Rossleaf is perhaps a young adult, but certainly when she was a child into her teenage years and possibly into her young adult years, she uh, was unable to read until such time as she uh, came to Rhodes Island. <clears throat> but yes, she spent a considerable amount of time after joining Rhodes Island uh, recovering more so than anything. Yeah, both from a physical standpoint and from a uh, mental standpoint. She was in fact not allowed to take part in combat operations even though she had wanted to for quite a while until, uh, on Calcite's orders. Yeah, until the... until she was confident that she had also mentally recovered from what she had experienced and just sort of the, the general lifestyle that she had lived as a mercenary and member of the Junior Army. <clears throat> but yes. I'm not used to talking this much. I gotta make sure to keep my water handy. 
Sí. Anyway, as I was saying. So yes, so Frostleaf is an operator who has a little bit of a sort of short story associated with her, a little cutscene. There's a lot of them that do, sort of giving a little bit more information on their backstory, sort of a more personal look at it than you get from just reading their files, which are usually a bit impersonal and a little bit vague on account of being, you know, essentially an in-universe document about them rather than an actual sort of story from their perspective or from the perspective of some narrator or anything like that. But yes, I do intend to go over that at some point. Uh, it's something that we will need to unlock. Uh, I don't remember what exactly the... what exactly needs to be done in order to unlock it. So it might be a little bit, or it might be very soon. We'll talk a little bit about more Warp and Frostleaf then. Until then, though, let's talk a little bit about what she does in gameplay. Yes. So, Frostleaf is a guard with the Lord subclass. So you may be familiar with, with them from our use of... Uh, oh, what was that? What was that fellow's name? The cat. I can't remember. Oh, dear. Yes, the man who turns into a cat and wields a sword. Yes, he is a guard with the with the Lord uh, subclass, as was Tachanka, though Tachanka was somewhat unique in his functions. Um, yeah, Midnight also. I don't No, We definitely. I'm confident we've seen Midnight at one point. Yes, I'm confident we've seen Midnight. Though come to think of it, I don't remember when that would have been. Anyway, all this is to say that she is a guard who has an extended attack range but attacks against enemies beyond a certain range do slightly less damage in exchange for the fact that she, you know, has this ranged attack that most other guards do not have. It's yes. So the main reason I wanted to focus on Frostleaf right now, other than just the fact that I like her, is the fact that I'm planning on adding, using guards a little bit more. For the most part, previously, my tactics tended to focus on like my melee or my ranged units. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But I did want to sort of expand my horizons a little bit. I wanted to expand my horizons a little bit, explore some more possibilities, you know. Broaden, broaden the depths. Eh, yeah. Broaden the depths is perhaps not the best way to describe it, but... Yes. Learn more about game by using different things that I don't normally use. There we go. Yeah, anyway, all of that is to say I'm going to be using guards a little bit more, focusing on them a little bit more. And others I wanted to talk about today, but I did, didn't plan everything out quite as well as I should have, and I sort of ran out of time to prepare information on the others. Yes. So, Rossley. She is able to attack at range. This is a common characteristic of Lord Guards. Yes, her kit specializes in inhibiting enemy movement. Yes, her first skill causes a slow, and the second skill has a chance to bind, which prevents enemy movement. Yes, her first skill is titled Frost Tomahawk. Yes, it is an auto-recovery skill, so it, you know, builds up charge over time. Yes, that activates upon, uh, upon attack whenever it is charged that increases the physical damage of her next attack and inflicts a slow upon the enemies that it, uh, upon the enemy that it hits. Yes, the damage starts at 105% of her attack, so effectively a 5% boost, and inflicts a 20% a 20% slow for 1.5 seconds. Yes, at max, it deals 150% of her attack and slows by 50% for 3 seconds. Yes, her second skill, Ice Tomahawk, is another auto-recovery skill, but this one is a manual activation. It gives her a buff that causes her to inflict a slow with every attack and, and gives her a chance to bind the enemy. Yes, the way I phrased it earlier implied that she only slowed with her first skill, but that is inaccurate. But yes, the attack speed buff starts at 5, and attack speed in Arc Knights is a little bit, a little bit complex. It has more factors than just straight up speed, 
but you can broadly think of a plus five attack speed as being roughly five percent faster. I'll probably go into that a little bit in a little bit more detail. I definitely plan to explain the game a little bit better than I have previously, because I certainly, I understand it a lot more now from having played it more. That's it. And I've just sort of been more interested in digging deeper into the mechanics of it a little bit lately. So, like I said, we'll go over that in a little bit more detail later, because it's a little bit complex for this. I want to keep this relatively short. But yes. So, Ice Tomahawk, once again, gives her a temporary buff. Yes, the buff gives her a plus 5 to her attack speed, which goes up to 50, plus 50 attack speed. Again, roughly, for right now, you can just think of that as a percentage increase to her attack speed. But yes, it reduces the, the speed of enemies by 30% at base, going up to 50%, and the bind chance starts at 15% for 1.5 seconds, then goes up to 40% for 2 seconds. Yes, upon promoting to Elite 2, Frostleaf gains a talent called Covered Strike, a talent that increases her attack range, but also her attack interval, which is the other sort of aspect of attack speed. Yeah, yeah, the attack interval is the time between attacks. Yes, so, <clears throat> yeah, it increases her attack interval from 1.3 seconds by 0.15 to a total of 1.45 seconds. So, I've seen some people debating as to whether this is a, a valuable trade or whether promoting, promoting uh, Frostleaf to Elite 2 essentially nerfs her, weakens her. Though, of course, promoting her to Elite 2 does increase her, yeah, increases her level cap. So, it's not as though she doesn't get any benefit from it, yeah, or it isn't, as, it isn't as though the benefit she gets from it is totally you know, subsumed by the reduced attack speed. Yes. One thing about this, though, or, well, yeah, I'll, I'll stick to how I phrased it in my notes. <clears throat> yeah, you may have guessed from the fact that her name is Frostleaf and from the fact that her skills involved are both named Ice something. Frostleaf has a bit of a Ice theme to her. In universe, she uses Ice Arts. Yeah, and that is how she is able to freeze and slow enemies and all that. Yeah, the game does have a status effect that can be inflicted upon enemies called Cold, which decreases their attack speed and inflicting cold on an enemy that is already cold freezes them, stopping them, stopping their movements and their attacks entirely for a time. But yes, this status effect did not exi exist back when the game was released and didn't wasn't introduced for quite a while. I don't remember precisely when it was. I think it was, it was around the time of an event that we haven't gone over yet and probably won't for a good while. But yes. So it was a good while ago. Yeah. But all this is to say it didn't exist back when Frostleaf was first implemented. So, despite all of her cold themes, she doesn't init she doesn't normally have the ability to inflict the cold status upon enemies. However, she was recently, relatively recently, again, I don't keep up super well. <laughs> I don't keep up super well with a lot of things. So, anyway, yes, relatively recently, she was given access to a module which is another thing that we will discuss later. It is You can think of it as just a way to improve your operators beyond the normally le normal leveling process for them. Yes, it is another thing that you unlock. Yes, she was given a module that improves her covered strike talent by giving it the chance to inflict cold with each attack. Yes. Regardless of whether or not she has Covered Strike, the module also allows her to deal a 10% of her attack damage as arts damage as well. Yeah, unfortunately though, while this thing, this module does exist, it is currently only available on the Chinese version of the game. Yeah, that's just sort of how things go. The Chinese version is the most up-to-date. 
Yes. Anyway, so let's go over her outfit a little bit. Talk a little bit about her skins and whatnot. But yes. So, cross leaf here. Yeah, one thing that's notable about her is you can probably assume from how she is dressed and all that is that she's a little bit of a music fan. That much is noted. Do this on another layer so I'm not besmirching Rossleaf's visage with my scribblings. Let's get a color that stands out a little bit more. That might be a little too glaring. There we are. Yes, so you can see from her headphones. All right, my tablet seems to want to act up a little bit. Strange. I did. Hmm. Well, it is what it is. Anyway, it looks like despite all of my efforts, I will be drawing with a mouse, tragically. But yes, from the headphones there, you can probably assume that she is fond of music, and indeed she is. That's an aspect of her character that is a good deal of attention is drawn to something that sort of develops over the course of that, uh, yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't, I didn't write down what they're called, but over the course of her little operator, in-game operator spotlight, we'll call it for right now. But yeah, the little, little bit of lore that you can see from her. Yes, she's also a bit of a, a bit of a fashionista, she's described as. So she always wears some, some nice clothes. A lot of characters in Ark Knights have really cool outfits that I like very much. And of course, the most stylish of all accessories is the pole axe. Yes, it's a very fun design. I like this little bit here. It almost looks like a trigger or something, though it's positioned in such a way that would make it a little bit awkward to pull. And it doesn't look like there's a lot of room for it to move, even if you did were to pull it. But yes, there's a lot of a lot of little bits on her axe that are interesting. A lot of the weapon designs are a little bit impractical, but I also like them. I like things that are a little bit impractical and a little bit silly. I think that makes them a little bit more fun. But yes, so as a fashionista, you can see that she wouldn't be de caught dead wearing the same outfit, two promotions in a row. Yes, this is her Elite 2 art. You can see the Volpine figure behind her. I didn't mention it before, but she is a Volpo. So that is to say she is her sort of animal that she has a, that yeah, gives her its motif is the R foxes. Yeah, she has two whole axes in this. Yeah, of note is the fact that this axe more resembles the one used in the icon art for, for, uh, what was it? Ice, Ice Tomahawk is the second one, right? Or, yeah, Ice Tomahawk. Whereas the other one is her original weapon, which more resembles the one used in the icon for Frost Tomahawk. Yes, the outfit is generally quite similar, but there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of the particulars are switched up a little bit. You can see she has a different jacket. Yeah. The boots, it's a little bit hard to make out if they're the same or not. Yeah, being shadowed as they are, I don't see a whole, whole lot of detail. They do look rather similar. I just noticed the sort of X shape. Oops. Yeah, I noticed the X shape here seems to match what we see on this boot. So probably the, the, roughly the same. But yes, the hat, the hat is a constant though. That is something that you will see across all of her art. She is never, never caught dead without the hat. Yes, this is an ultimate skin for her. Yeah, you can see she swaps out to a different axe. Yeah, the outfit is very much, very different. It has a very different impression to it. For one thing, she loses the big jacket, despite the fact that she's in a seemingly quite cold environment. Yeah, you can see a little bit of visual metaphor here with the plants that are encased in ice. Frosted leaves, perhaps you might call them. But yes, personally of these, I think I'm most fond of the original outfit. 
Yeah, I like the I like the big sleeves on the big jacket mostly. I think those are those are cute. Yeah, which she she loses in the in the second outfit. She also sort of has her in the in her base sprite has her hands sort of tucked up in her sleeves, sort of dangling a little bit. Yeah, which is again quite cute. So I like it. Yeah, I think I like the original axe a little bit more. Yeah, this one, I don't know. I like the fact that it has sort of a spike on it, a spike on the end, so it looks a little bit more like a halberd. Yeah, this looks more practical in a lot of ways. More specifically, it looks more practical in how the sort of blade is designed. I could see an axe like that existing in real life, whereas the other one is a little bit, a little bit weird. Yeah, I don't think... I guess it's not that bad when I think about it, because I was just sort of thinking of it as sort of being, you know, shaped like this. But, you know, all axes do sort of have a... or, well, most axes do sort of protrude out a little bit from wherever they are attached to. Yeah, usually it's more like this, rather than like this. But it's not that dramatic. I suppose it resembles a little bit the design of, say, a bearded axe. They exaggerated it a little bit for effect and all that, but a similar sort of idea. I don't like drawing with a mouse, but again, we must make do. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not as fond of this, this section here that looks like, I don't know, perhaps a plumbing project gone horribly wrong. But yeah, so that's all she's got for skins. One thing I did want to point out as well is that she also has a sprite that I believe is used in said cutscene lore bit that we haven't unlocked yet, uh, where she doesn't have her axe, but she does still have the same pose, probably because it was just easier to either erase the axe or just submit a version of it where the layer or layers that the axe was on just aren't enabled. Yeah, she doesn't have the axe, but she does still have the same pose, which makes her, you know, the, the way that her pose is normally, there's a little bit more balance. It looks a little bit more like she's sort of leaning on the axe, which is perhaps not a great idea, but it's something at least. <clears throat> yeah, it's something at least. The other one makes her look like she's sort of midway midway into a pose, or perhaps if she, that she's leaning against a wall or something. Sit. But yes, anyway, like I said, I did want to talk a little bit about more, yeah, a little bit more about more operators, but I don't want this to take too long, and I don't have all the notes that I would have liked to have prepared for that. So, we will leave it at this for now, and I will swap over my monitor, or my tablet, my drawing tablet that I'm using as a second monitor, back to my main PC, and then we'll play the video game. Yes, be right back. Alright, we are back. So yes, I hope you're all as excited to be getting into the game as I am. Yes, definitely looking forward to it. Alright, and we should have game audio now. I've Hopefully what I did to mute it hasn't had any long-lasting repercussions. The sound's a little bit touchy around here sometimes, but I think we're good. If we're not, uh, please inform me otherwise. <laughs> yes, so we should be just about ready to start. Yeah, so we're probably not going to get too deep into this into this uh, act right away but we will be beginning chapter four let's see so just as a reminder we'll be doing chapter four and then uh, maybe this is a reminder for me more than anything else hold on yes yeah, so we'll be doing chapter four you know it doesn't matter <laughs> i believe we're doing another event after chapter four but we don't need to worry about that right now Yes. For now, let's stop dillying and or dallying, and let's get into the into the game. Yes. So, last time, 
we had quite an eventful beginning to our career as the doctor. Yes, waking up in a facility of some variety in a city by the name of Chernobog, we were quickly assailed by a group of yeah, a group of once peaceable, now quite militant, infected, going by the name going by the the title reunion. But yes, for unrelated reasons, or well, somewhat related, but Yes. In addition to that, the city was also in the path of a of a catastrophe, and thus, regardless of their rioting and general roughhousing, was most likely going to be destroyed. So we booked it out of there pretty quickly, and made our way quickly to the city of Lungmen. Yes, where things were not quite uh not quite as peaceable as they might have liked us to present. Yes, they were having their own troubles, not least of which the fact that Reunion was working their way into the into that city as well. Yes, they were looking for a girl by the name of Misha. Yes, whom we made contact with and escorted. Yeah, we're working on escorting towards the uh, to the Lungmen Guard Department. Yes, she wasn't super keen on the idea, and eventually ended up being sort of captured by Reunion. Yes, where it turned out that one of the reunion leaders active in the area actually happened to have been her her brother. Yes, who now went by the title Skull Shatterer. Yes. So confronting Skull Shatterer several times, both before and after the capture of Misha. Yes, we eventually ended up killing Skull Shatterer. But Misha having spent time with Reunion, having come to sympathize with them, especially on account of, you know, her brother. Yes, she eventually decided to take up the mantle of Skull Shatterer herself and oppose us. And unfortunately, it did not uh, did not turn out quite so well as we might have liked. Yes, she was to us an enemy, and so we had to had to fight her to the death to survive. So yes, the fight, however, against Reunion is not done, and our time in yeah, we are still underway with, uh, oh, I don't remember precisely what our mission is at this point. Oh, well, I'm sure we'll learn <laughs> once we get into the, into the game. The doctor's perhaps a little bit still confused from having just woken up from an unknown, from a co um, uh, coma, um, uh, coma of unknown length and being thrust into the middle of a war that they do not understand very well. Anyway, so. Let's talk a little bit about changes to the squad. Yes, not too much has changed, but more might change in the in the near future. Yes, you may have noticed that Frostleaf is now on the team. Yes, we are going to promote her real quick. As soon as the feedback has been submitted. Okay, there we go. Yes, we're going to promote her up to Elite 115. Indeed they are. But yes, so now we have access to Ice Tomahawk, as stated. I think we'll try that out. I've used Frost Tomahawk before. I've used Frost Tomahawk before, but I've not used, uh... Well, yeah, it, I suppose it should be pretty obvious that I haven't used the other one before, considering I didn't unlock it until just now, but, you know. Thanks. No problem. Yeah, I like that Warfarin's kind of, or Warfarin? I feel like I've been referring to Frostleaf as Warfarin a lot. I hope that hasn't been too, too common. But yes, anyway. I like that, that Frostleaf is a very sort of calm, quiet sort. I'll do my job. Those tend to be the characters that I like the most. But yes, in addition, we've also added Astasia to our squad. It occurs to me that I've never heard her name pronounced in English before, so I'm not 100% sure of how to pronounce it. Nevertheless, we're going to proceed until we have reason to believe it is pronounced otherwise. Yes, we are also going to level her up and promote her. Yes, she is an arts guard. Yes, so she will be doing arts damage. No report after viewing. Yes, she will be doing arts damage with her with all of her attacks. 
Yeah, I believe I had mentioned it before, but previously I was under the impression that Arts Guards only did damage, or only did Arts damage while their skills were active. But yes, this is not accurate. There are a number of non-Arts Guards. I'll pause, so I'm not talking over her. But yes, there's a number of non-Arts Guards who are able to do Arts damage while skills are active, so I think that's what I was getting confused on. No report after viewing. Indeed, no report. Yeah, Estosia is one of the characters that I wanted to talk about and thus will be talking about later, so I won't go over her skills too much either. But yes, I think we're going to stick with... well, hmm... No, I think we'll switch to Astral Sword. I'm over here, Doctor. And finally, I think the last change that I've made since last time is adding Kazemaru here. Yes, she is a very different sort of operator. She is a specialist, so she will be playing a very different role from the others. We will be promoting her as well. Indeed. There's still more progress I can make on myself. Yep, and we'll be making a little bit more progress just now. Watch. Just take the corner of this origami and ever so lightly pull. And now it's just like a real beast cub. I just wanted to show off a little something to you, and I hope it turned out nice. Indeed. But yes, we'll see a little bit more about Kazemaru, and I'll also be talking a little bit about her later. But yeah, she wasn't one of the ones that I wanted to talk about this day in particular, but she is a character that I would like to talk about. I see. But yes. There's still more progress to explain a little bit, she is an operator, or her subclass is Dollkeeper, which is to, to say that she has the ability that when her HP is reduced to zero, she'll be replaced with a duplicate, a substitute character who will stay on the field temporarily, and then if that substitute's HP is not depleted, she will automatically redeploy back on the same space that she was. But yes, I haven't looked into too much how one might use such an operator, but I'm interested in experimenting a little bit. Yeah, I've wanted to use Kazemaru for a fair while, but I never really had the chance to because I simply didn't have her previously. But yes. I'm going to take another sip. Sip. Yeah. My water bottle made a weird sound when I was sipping there, so hopefully that didn't get picked up on the mic. But yes. You'll notice, if you look over, you will see that Kazemaru's skills both sort of feed into this by reducing her HP. They both reduce her HP. But yes, I understand that Origami Art Twin Shadows is, yeah, it activates, uh, or once it is active, it remains active even if she is switched out. So that is sort of one of the, one of the better skills to use on her, of her two skills that she has. Yeah, it remains a active on her even when her substitute is in play. I'll see to the role I should. Yes. So, I think we'll stick with what we have here for right now. I don't remember if I addressed the fact that Amia is addressed differently. Currently. I feel like I did. I feel like I did. I think we... I might have been using her default skin originally, and I think I switched over to this skin after we got her... Yeah, got her promoted and got her Elite 1 outfit that I, or Elite One art that I didn't like quite so much. Yeah, I don't know. There's just something about this one that I, that I don't like as much as the original. Maybe it's just that she, she looks a little bit, like, a little bit panicked almost. I don't know. Anyway, I think we'll use her, her other skill here. We'll set that as her default. And we'll be sure to actually select that when she is added to our squad. Yes. I think we will keep the team roughly the same as it is now. Because yeah, I don't want to don't want to be too much longer. I don't think I'll stay for more than one or two missions. 
depending on how long it goes. Yeah, beyond this. Because, yes, not being used to streaming, I'm finding my, my throat's giving out a little bit faster than I would like to. <clears throat> 8.36 p.m., rainy. Visibility, 12 kilometers. Rhodes Island. Welcome back. Mm-hmm. I already heard what happened from the recon squad. Amia, let me check your hands. There's no need for that, Dr. Calcite. Amia? I... I... Alright. Hmm. It looks fine. The rings haven't cracked or discolored. But it might be different next time. Listen closely, Amia. Be a little more careful. Dr. Calcite, I... I need some rest. Go ahead. Hmm. Never put Ami in this much risk again. You are also responsible for what happened. When you first came back to Rhodes Island, she looked a bit like this. These emotions never really left Amia. This has to change. Dr. Tiber, you should stay with her. Don't mess up. Knock, knock. It's open. Oh, Ami's got a, a nice room here. Yeah, very... Yeah, I don't know... I don't know what words you would use to describe this aesthetic, but it's a lot better than the, the other rooms that we've seen so far. Yes, it is less sparse, but I guess that's one of the perks you get for being in charge of Rhodes Island, more or less. Anyway. Dr. Tiber? Worried? I am... You saw right through me. <laughs> I thought I did a good job hiding it. Yes, I'm a bit worried. Just a little, though. I'm already used to doing this. After all, I can't drag down everyone else anymore. Right, Doctor? I... I don't understand. Doctor, I don't understand. No, we don't have a whole lot of whole lot of choice in this matter. No. I I know what we're trying to do. I also know that some sacrifices are inevitable. But I What I don't know is why must I watch people disappear before my eyes one by one, even though they can be saved? You are so close. Maybe just a little bit more. I know that I have a duty, and I will continue to move forward. But right now, I just feel so tired. Amia? Please let me have some time alone, Dr. Fiber. Thank you. Yes, the events of the last chapter are indeed weighing quite heavily on Amia. Good morning, Dr. Tiber. Oh, Dr. Calcite, you're here as well? Amia? I have a rather urgent mission here, and I need some people to help out. An abandoned city was discovered not far from Lung Men. I surmise that it's one of the cities that formed in the aftermath of the Chernobog incident. We'll have to explore that city, uncover more information, and search for any survivors. If the situation is particularly serious, for example, if Reunion is hiding there, there may be serious ramifications on our future operations. Here's the specific proposal that I have in mind. Look it over when you have time. Understood. Oh, one more thing. Franco submitted a report to me mentioning that they had to return to Black Steel. As for the situation in the Long Men slums, Penguin Logistics requested for you to meet them there to discuss some information. There are some more sensitive details, so it would be best for you to go in person. I know. I'll head over right now. Doctor, let's go. I still have some things to discuss with Dr. Tiber. Hmm. 
May I listen in? You may not. I can cover my ears. You cannot. You should get going. Uh, Dr. Calcite, you're not allowed to bully Dr. Tiber. I won't. Do we trust her? <laughs> I don't think we trust Calcite at this point. I don't think we trust her not to bully us. I trust her with Amia. And with Amia's best intentions. But I don't trust her... I don't trust her with us, necessarily, so much. You. You couldn't even do something so basic. Forget it. I had a feeling this would happen. Amia is an incredibly resilient kid. But, if she has to force herself to be strong, there will come a day when the pressure breaks her. Do not let this happen. If there is a next time, you'd better be a little more useful. Hmm? What's with that face? Excuse me, but what do you mean by Amia's rings? It's related to the state of her health. If Amia is involved in an intense battle, you must check her rings immediately afterwards. No matter what changes you see, you must report them to me. For the time being, that's all you're allowed to know. Oh, right. You have to go down to the medical center in two days to have a physical done. Don't forget it. You can go. Liskarm is waiting outside to escort you. Alright. Let us begin. Operation 4-1. I imagine this position immediately after the previous story chapter. We probably won't see too, too much severe action. Superior enemy stats and probably numbers notwithstanding. But yes. So, given our greater usage of guards, I think we're going to start by positioning another melee unit. Yeah, I definitely feel like I've underestimated the ability to block a little bit. Yeah, or rather, I've overestimated, perhaps, the necessity or... I don't know. Maybe not necessity, but perhaps the usefulness. I don't know. Necessity, I think, is the appropriate word to use. Of defenders. Because I pretty much always, you know, rely on the strategy of positioning a single defender such that they can block most or if not all of what is coming down a particular lane so that a ranged unit can can then stand there to actually take out the threat personally Danger? As if I should fear it. Hmm. we're doing pretty good on Kazemaru and if I want to show off her ability Maybe I shouldn't have positioned... Maybe I shouldn't have positioned, uh... Lopsis quite so early. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is how, uh... Yeah, her second skill also places another duplicate. The Kami Ningyo. Yes, we're doing pretty good so far, holding the line. I think we'll place Astizia. Yeah, I would assume that the Kami Ningyo, yeah, lasts until the skill end. There we go. Nope, I'm not scared. Yes, Texas has not been doing a whole, whole lot. Yes, fairly high attack and resistance. Not high defense, then, presumably. Okay. Or at least not notably high defense. Yes, we'll activate Astral Sword. Yes. Astral Sword, as it says here, allows her to attack all blocked enemies. This is slightly inaccurate, because what it actually does is it allows her to, yes, attack all enemies that are within her attack range up to the number of enemies that she can block. Yes, so, for instance, if she can block three, or block two with a skill active, then she will attack two enemies at a time, and so on and so forth. One thing that's a little bit challenging to me about Kaze Mario 
is that the, uh, yeah, the name, yeah. her voice actress pronounces her name as Kaze Maru or Kazimaru. It's not quite the proper pronunciation, which me being a little bit of a pronunciation and grammar snob, uh, I find a little bit, a little bit irritating. Yes, you know, no, no shade, as they say. You know, I'm sure that, uh, yeah, you know. I don't, uh, I don't blame her. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with it. You know, I just <laughs> am the sort of person who likes to hear things pronounced in the way that I consider to be proper. Anyway, so... Despite our best efforts, Kazemaru uh, is remaining plenty strong, standing tall. So yes, so we didn't get to see her use her substitute. At least we did get to see her Kamingyo. Yeah, Kazemaru. I don't know. Again, I said I, I said I said I it didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to be mean about it. So I'm not going to to linger on it too much. Fantastic results, Doctor. But don't overwork yourself. Be sure to rest up well. Will do. Will do. All right. So let's try that for real. Yes. No adjustments really to be made. These the strategy was smooth and easy. Yeah. Nothing and really needed to be to be done. An enemy coordinates authorized. Please stand by. Yes, so we will basically leave it as such, I think. Yes, I don't... In Okay, on a surrounding melee tile. No need to leave it to chance. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering a little bit if the... Yeah, if the... Danger? What's the word I'm looking for? If the Kaminingyo would be summoned on a more tiles if I was in if I had positioned her in a place where she could potentially see more enemies but no or more enemies sorry more tiles but uh, no it only places one so presumably it always places one on the space directly in front of her yes we never really got into a situation where we needed the extra the extra hand so I might just place Astasia and not use a defender. Again, yeah, when I say wanting to rely on guards more, I was specifically sort of thinking guards, not just melee units. So I think I might have phrased it. Well, um, can I? Yes. Okay, good job, Bank. Yes, I think I might have phrased it in such a way as to imply that I was thinking about melee units in general. And while that is true to a certain extent, it is primarily, primarily guards specifically that I want to focus on. Everyone. Yes, once again, as as Astesia is a character that I want to talk about later. Yeah, we're not going to go into too much detail right now, but she does have a talent that increases her attack speed over time as she remains on the battlefield. Thus, she can provide more value the longer that she is in play, basically. Nope. Yes, yeah, so we're doing pretty good so far. We haven't had any issues. Yeah, even without the healing. Mm, maybe that was a little bit early. I think we'll place Gummy in reserve. Because, yeah, I had sort of... hadn't really considered the fact that yeah, I hadn't really considered the fact that Astesia does only normally block one enemy. Okay, this fellow is quite strong. So it might be best if I were to deploy at least one medic. Because yes, I don't want Frostleaf to go down, ideally. And will this... No. Okay, so... Sacrifices 50% of the unit's current HP. Okay. Yeah, so the less HP she has, the less she loses from it. But yes, so anyway, so the substitutes can also be attacked just like the main unit can. I should probably activate Astesia's skill, given circumstances. But yes, the substitute can also take damage, 
I don't know how it necessarily interacts with targeting priority. Which is to say, I don't know if it, you know, counts as the most recently deployed unit on account of technically being the most recently deployed unit and thus attracting the attention of, of, uh, yeah, thus attracting the attention of ranged units. So yes, that fellow uh, did quite a bit of damage to Texas quite quickly there. I don't uh, like that so much. So let's stop him. Yes, we've seen a little bit of the com the uh, substitute, Kamininkyo. Yeah. One thing that is true that I don't think I mentioned is the fact that her... Yeah, her Kamininkyo can't block. So you can see the enemy went right past her, you know, attacking a little bit, I think, as it went. But it did quickly get caught up on... Or it did quickly got past her and was blocked by Texas, who didn't quite have the defense you stand up to it. Sip. I got a new water bottle recently, by the way. Yeah, it's a lot bigger than the old one. Yeah, my old one, I would take it to work and I usually have to refill it one to two times per day. Yeah, or per work shift. But yeah, this one, I can just bring it and honestly don't even need to refill it usually once I get back home. Real nice. Anyway, we have other things to concern ourselves with. Namely, the fact that it is 6.03 p.m., overcast, and visibility is 19 kilometers. Desert by Lung Men, facility 14. I've reached the destination. No other abnormalities found. Report complete. Crossleaf, why are you frowning the whole way here? I'm just a little concerned about Amiya's group. They've already safely returned to Rhodes Island. Meryl and Doberman already left New Lung Man a week ago for their next assignment. It must have been a pretty tough mission if it required sending those two together. Blacksteel and Penguin Logistics both have their own matters to attend to. Oh, Miss Carmen, Franca. I'm... I'm glad they're safe. You've got to work hard as well, just like them. When Franca sent you over to me, she spoke very highly of you. R really? If only you weren't so timid, she said. Uh. Hey, don't act like you're going to start crying. Aren't you also a member of Black Steel? I, I'm not crying. In any case, let's continue our mission. Our next task is to work with the other recon teams to scout out this entire city. Other than searching for survivors, we also need to assess the situation. If we encounter hostile infected, we have to deal with the threat quickly. Even though our mission isn't particularly dangerous, it's still best to proceed with caution. In the event that Reunion is, is involved in this, we'll retreat immediately and report back to Calcite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Understood. All that's left for us to do is focus on our job. 6.12 p.m. Overcast. Visibility 19 kilometers. Rhodes Island. Deserted Mobile City. Two days after the discovery of Facility 14. Ah, you made it, Doctor. Good, doc good timing, Dr. Tiber. Our job here is about done. You probably won't see us for a while. You're leaving already? We'll see you soon. Er, <clears throat> too whimsical. We'll see you soon enough. It won't be long before we're back on standby in Rhodes Island. Don't miss me too much. Well, unfortunately, we don't have such an official sounding reason, right, Texas? Hold on a second. Technologistics Logistics is about to go on vacation. It's only going to be one precious day, but still. Apologies, this isn't the best time to talk about it. Don't worry, everyone needs to get some rest. I should be the one saying that to you. Huh? That's right, that's right, Omnia girl. You really need a bit of R&R. &R. There are many things in Rhodes Island that must be taken care of. I can understand that, but make sure not to give yourself too much pressure, Amia. 
No matter how strong your will is, your body won't be able to keep up if you get exhausted. You'd better not get sick. Everyone's counting on you. I... Everyone has always been looking after me. You were also inspired by the way you fight. Just that much is enough. Since I'm already here, I'll take this opportunity to get a free checkup before heading back. My work here is about done anyway. Next up is... Amia, Dr. Tiber. Hmm? I'm listening. Keep up the good work. Cheer up. What? Well, huh? After we finish our report, we'll be right back. No matter what, life must move forward. Amia, take care. Everyone, I... I will. You all take care as well. See you next time. Doctor? I have to visit the slums in Outer Lung Man again. I should be of assistance. Should I go with you? Don't worry, Doctor. Another member of Rhodes Island, Project Red, will be joining me in Lung Man. She's really good. Uh, with her there, you don't have to worry about me. We may have achieved a perfect victory, but we still can't let our guard down. Indeed. Yes, the battle is only beginning. But it will only begin later. Yes, because for right now, it's time for me to wrap up. Yes. I think we could have gone a little bit longer, but again, I'm wanting to get used to this a little bit more. Take it a little bit easy. Ease back into streaming properly. But yes. One thing, though, is, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely enjoying it. I feel like I say that every time, that I sort of have rediscovered the fact that I enjoy streaming, basically. But it's true every time, broadly speaking. It is true, basically. So... You know, I'm not going to stop saying it just because of, I don't know, I'll probably stop saying it a little bit more once I do it more and it becomes more routine. But anyway, so I have enjoyed this stream. I hope you all have enjoyed it as well. Yeah, it's definitely not to get into too much personal detail, but it's definitely been a bit of a challenge for me streaming recently. Yeah, a lot of things have been quite challenging for me recently. Yeah, I've been having some, some personal troubles, and fortunately, you know, don't concern yourself too much. I definitely feel like I am on the mend on, on that. Yeah, I definitely feel like I am sort of coming out of the, uh, the worst of it. And, you know, that is why I feel more confident than ever that I'll be back to streaming. Yeah, whereas before, I mostly, you know, I don't know, I've struggle to say that I was really confident in in it but yeah more so I just sort of wanted it I should say but you know that's part of it too anyway so definitely enjoyed streaming again yeah definitely yeah my nerves sort of have left me pretty quickly here as I have done this and so yeah I'm looking forward to more streaming I don't know that I'm going to stream again this week. Yeah, I I think probably going forward once two streams a week becomes common for me. I think just for the sake of consistently consistency, rather. For the sake of consistency, I will also be streaming on the off weeks. Yeah, normally most commonly, maybe, I should say. Most commonly in the past on days when I would uh collab days where the we wouldn't yeah what would normally be a collab day for me where my collab partner is not available normally I just wouldn't stream on that particular day yeah again I think for the sake of consistency going forward on off days I will I will be streaming since we're only going to be collabing once every two weeks but yeah that being said I don't think I'm going to start that this Friday in particular because I do want to get some of the, yeah, operator spotlights a little bit more prepared. Ideally have sort of a backlog. I might also go over fewer at a time. 
Because yeah, previously, yeah, we did. And this was in part due to circumstances beyond my control. But last time around, yeah, we it took us, you know, two and a half operator spotlights to get through like five characters. So going forward, I might limit it to one or two unless I really have a reason to go over like a whole team of operators again, like I did with team uh, A4, I believe, previously. Or was it A6? One of them. Anyway. So yeah, anyway. Stream, fun. Arc Knight's fun. Thank you all for being patient with me. I appreciate it, and I uh, hope to bring you more good video in future. So yes, anyway. All that being said, it is time for a raid. As always, if anyone has any raid suggestions, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, yes, I can find a target on my own. Sit. So yes, no suggestion it looks like. So, I think we're going to go and drop by Sroka's channel. Yeah, I feel like we've been by Sroka a fair amount recently, but we'll drop by again. No reason not to. Yes. So, raid. Sroka VTube. Yes, another VTuber. Like I said, we've been over there a fair amount before. Yeah, as a treasure hunting magpie VTuber. Looks like they're going to get started. Uh, yeah, it looks like they haven't started yet, as far as I can tell. Oh no, no, never mind. Yes, they have. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, they are going. They are playing some uh, some more Valheim with uh, another VTuber. It looks like. But yes. Anyway, so thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a. Oh, hold on. Can't forget. Can't forget. The customary raid message is: We have arrived. Look at that, it's a real stream. But yes, anyway, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you've had a fine night. I hope that you'll continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. <laughs>